Hello everyone, you're watching the left, right and center and I'm Maria Shaquille. With Haryana polls around the corner, the Congress has once again raised the issue of scrapping the Agni Pat scheme. Remember, Haryana, almost uh, every second home in the state sends a soldier or officer to the front. In August, the Nayab Singh Saini government announced 10% reservations for Agni Veer and Constable Forest Guard jobs. Despite facing opposition, the government is steadfast at the centre in its support of the two-year-old Agnipat's recruitment scheme and maintains it has no plans to change it. The government says the scheme is integral to national security of the country. The Congress in turn alleges it is a threat to national security. So on the show tonight, I ask, Agnipat Rao in poll season, is it pure politics or national security concern? Also on the show, I'm going to take you to Karnataka and uh, it is Karnataka's twist with scams which seem to be never-ending. First, it was the Muda and Valmiki scams targeting Chief Minister Sidharamaya and his family. Now it is the alleged COVID scam that may haunt the BJP. The Congress government had ordered the probe following allegations of corruption in the purchase of equipment and medicines. Sidharamaya's cabinet took up the probe report into the alleged scam today. The Commission of Inquiry set up by the Congress government in Karnataka headed by retired High Court Judge John Dikuna submitted an interim report to the Chief Minister last week. Sources say 13,000 crore was spent during the COVID time under the BJP regime and there is inconsistency in billing for 11, in fact 1,120 crore worth of spending. So is it a scam versus scam slugfest in the southern state? But first up, the spotlight on Agnipat scheme again. Let me bring in Colonel uh, Rohit uh, Chaudhary, who's the spokesperson of the Congress. Lieutenant General uh, D.P. Watts is a former Rajya Sabha MP. Major General uh, Sanjay Meston is a uh, uh, defense analyst. We also have Lieutenant General Sanjay Kulkarni and Major General Yash Moore. Lieutenant General Sanjay Kulkarni, beginning with you, do you think there should not be any, uh, you know, continued discussion on a scheme which has been settled, all the doubts cleared, and in recent times, only, you know, few weeks back, we had seen how multiple forces from the C uh, CISF to the BSF, all their heads mm -hmm. had, you know, tried to communicate rather aggressively <laughs> how they will be ensuring that they are absorbed, that those who leave the forces will be absorbed effectively. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I must say it's a very transformative scheme and it's unnecessarily politicizing is not worth it. And, you know, there's a limit to which you can stress it. It's just about two years old. The first lot which will finally be released from the army would be in the January of 2027. Hmm. There are reforms to be required. Yes, reforms. There are committees set up to find out exactly what is, the, how we can make it a little more attractive. And therefore, maybe certain things like 25% retention going to 50% retention. The ultimate thing is that Agdipat scheme, the real success of this scheme goes in how we rehabilitate the ones who are released from the army. And keeping that in view, a lot of Things have, been, have come up of late. You've seen lots of the paramilitary forces, the government making announcements for reservation for all of them in the central paramilitary forces, into Assam rifles, into police. The state governments have come up with 10% reservations in the various schemes. Yes. So there is a lot that is being done for the ones who may be released from the army. And if that be so, I hmm. don't think we need to, because as regards the inputs that we get from the ground, are fantastic, very, very positive, that they are very, very committed, they are skilled, and they are looking forward. And therefore, I don't think the present lot unnecessarily politicizing it is not something we should go in it. We must trust the government. We must trust the, the system and the organization. And the organization is sending all the, the trained people. And therefore, there should be no apprehensions in anybody's mind that this is a scheme which will lead to compromising national security. Definitely not. It will enhance national security because okay. the average age from 29 will come to 26. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to bring in uh, the Congress spokesperson in just a bit. Uh, but before that, Major General uh, Yash Moore, I think the intent of the government and the larger plan that it has, uh, the, the reason why this scheme was brought in, 
is essentially to make our forces agile and young, something that is needed for a young nation. You know, so, so we cannot really question the intent, but it's about whether the, the rules are clear that only 25% of the Agni Veers will be absorbed, but it's also clear that the remaining will be also absorbed in one way or the other with multiple state governments, uh, institutions, the PSUs, all these are, have made the announcement. So why this confusion around it at all? Firstly, this scheme is not going to make us agile. This scheme came to save money. And let's be very frank, it was basically to reduce our uh, you know, revenue expenditure on pay and pension. Very, very clear. If it was that good, we should have brought it for police forces, we could have brought it for CRPF, BSF, paramilitary forces, or even why not for officer entry? At 14 years of service, uh, almost 40 to 50 percent officers are clear they are not going to get their next rank. And then we carry them all the way up to 54, 56 or 58 years of age. In case of Jawans, nothing much has changed. Training period has been reduced from nine to 10 months to six months. Out of that last one, one and a half months is going to their last final parade because now it's a major PR exercise. I don't know how agility is going to improve by this. And there are two categories of soldiers in the unit. The ones who are Agnivir, they get only 30 days leave. The other guy goes for 90 days leave. Their pay is less than half of the other guy. Plus, there is no, there is no uh, you know, pension for the family if they are killed in action. Plus, families don't get uh, canteen facility or military facilities, a hospital facility with regular school. There's absolutely uh, too much of uh, difference between these two entries. And in the unit, these people have come in very low numbers and they are not even suitable. You can't send them on a training course. You can't use them for uh, specialization. A soldier takes eight to nine years to become a soldier who can handle a tank or an air defense gun or an equipment. Here in four years service, what other than simple firing and guard duties, what are you going to teach them? You can't because you don't know which will be the 25% you'll retain. And now coming to the point of uh, the uh, SOPs that are being given by Haryana government and others, uh, when I speak to these Jawans, if you go to the police or go to the BSF, then you go Why should we join here? Four years waste here. This four years is wasted. Nobody is giving you seniority. Even army army, you'll be re-enlisted. Your service will start after you have finished these four years. In this four years, they cannot even apply for ACC commission. So there is there's despondency. There is it, It's not okay. a well-thought-out scheme, to be very frank. The, uh, and uh, uh, I think, uh, as General Narabne has said in his book, which we are still waiting to see, it is a bolt from the blue. The services were actually not in... Uh, not that much in picture, at least uh, uh, the way the scheme was rolled out. So my uh, position on the scheme has been consistent. Yes. Uh, no politics around, but time to take a, <laughs> a, a take a deep look into it. And the best way to take a look is to get a feedback from the rank and file, which is the units and the companies where this problem is being faced. Sure. Uh, Lieutenant General D.P. Watts, will you respond? Yes. You see, basically... Defense Minister has been saying time and again that scheme will be reviewed from time to time depending upon the defense needs or security needs of the country. Feedback from the armed forces. As on today, first thing is do we need them? One. Second thing, are we capable of rehabilitating them once they come out of service? Hmm. As far as the rehabilitation is concerned, basic contention of everybody is rehabilitation, which is primarily rehabilitation. One is, as was mentioned, and now it is in press also. Moreover, I am a votary to what others are saying. Hmm. As far as the retention is concerned, it is being reviewed. It is armed forces recommendations is 50%. I am personally in favor of even higher, 60% or 75%. What is the security environment today? We cannot afford to take them out. One thing. Second thing, I don't agree with General Moore that they will be useless, useless for the service and all that. No. First, let me make it very clear that technical specialties like Army Medical Corps, nursing assistants and all those, are exempted. So is the case in technical cadres of Air Force and Navy. Second thing, 
one more thing i wanted to bring it here that it is being reviewed they are not uh, bad soldiers what has been brought out no as far as officers are concerned arun chetrapal had just 6 months of service <coughs> and he won uh, paramvir chakra there are short service officers who proved to be very good even officer going from services on a uh, field duties attachment with infantry units they do it they fare very well so a short okay. time and they being not at par is not agreeable one okay. more thing i will like to bring it i agree with everybody a soldier once he becomes a shaheed he should be treated at par with a regular soldier as far as his liberalized family hmm. pension is concerned hmm. and other facilities should must rather not should they must also be granted okay. including hospitalization including canteen but these are being reviewed because scheme will be completed in 26 2026 by then recommendations will come and as the defense minister has said that they will be reviewed okay. as far as haryana government is concerned we have increased the ex gratia for up to 1 crore we have given them 10% reservations in police forces we have given them 5% reservation in c and d and 1% reservation in b and rest at par with regular soldiers as far as ex gratia is concerned and job to the dependent okay these are okay. and so, so is then, the case in uh, so then uh, paramilitary forces so then colonel rohit choudhury uh, what exactly is the reason why is the congress raising it right now if it is not pure politics or keeping in mind the haryana elections look our stand is very clear that agnipat scheme is not in the favor of the country the national defense security so that is the reason basic reason it is as colonel uh, jalmore has said it does not require Uh, it uh, does not satisfy the needs of agility age reduction it is pay related there are number of other issues there is too much of disparity which has been created by this scheme uh, between the soldiers so our take is very clear that indian india is facing two and a half front battle left uh, from the western front from the eastern front as well as then uh, internal security situations so it is not in the interest of national security that is the that is the first thing second thing uh, there can never be and there is in no way politics going on about agnivir that is the bottom line it is national security safety of the country that is paramount for us now coming on to the disparity which has been created between the soldiers as uh, number of panelists they have brought out that there are two different type of soldiers and two different type of martyrs their remunerations are different their uh, their uh, entitlements are different and uh, this kind of disparity cannot be cannot be carried forward in defense forces as general what has said that the technical cadres are they can uh, if they are exempted it is only nursing assistants which are exempted it is not the eme it is not the not the uh, technical trades of various uh, arms and services they are not exempted and for four years as uh, rightly brought out brought out that they will only be doing uh, sentry duties there are employability restrictions uh, uh, put by the defense forces by the army itself that they cannot be deployed independently they they cannot be deployed on indi- uh, uh, on sensitive locations hmm. so you mean you need to have Uh, one soldier, regular soldier, uh, on, on duty on uh, Agni Vis. So these there are a lot of issues. If the scheme was so good, why there is a review? Whenever there is an ex- election uh, on 22nd of March, lo- in uh, before the Lok Sabha elections, Defence Minister came on record and he said that we will be if required that we will be doing the review. The six uh, almost uh, five and a half months have passed. There is no review. If the scheme was so good so you are then, essentially uh, the congress it, it says don't scrap it attractive. but tweak it to based on the feedback that you're getting major general uh, See, look, sanjay mr i, Mister, I just I'm want to i just want one more, one more point Go one ahead. more point i want to make 
that is the, these people they are saying that 10% uh, reservations have been kept in different uh, paramilitary organizations and even the haryana state government has done it but mind it this is on that is only for the ex servicemen there is no notification on record as on date uh, by any paramilitary services or haryana government that agnivirs are included in the notifications as far as the uh, central government is concerned central government has got almost 8 lakh 10000 jobs reserved for defense forces ex servicemen people out of that 7.7 lakh jobs are still not utilized they have not been given to ex servicemen in haryana itself there are 40000 jobs reserved for ex servicemen only only few hundred okay. jobs have been May, given to yes i'm coming to you sir so, major general so, sanjay misthon the concerns that have clarity. been raised so the point here is that the congress says that scrap it because it's about the political you know calculation they may be doing but if there is a rethink in terms of tweaking certain aspects which the defense minister has already highlighted it may be the step in the right direction then uh yeah very true uh, maria uh, the what you have stated that the defense minister has stated very clearly that uh, they will be looking for a review uh, see the, the, those are steps in the right direction because lot of points have been coming and today you have 100 people from uh, the indian army itself and sitting on a forum every one will have different op opinion on this based on their experience based on their exposure of uh, you know so many factors so uh, you will have varied and diverse opinions but the fact of the matter is i have heard all the speakers and everyone has some relevant points hmm. the fact of the matter is why this scheme was launched is basically to have a youthful profile and today we are witnessing in the world two wars are there the russia ukraine and the israel hamas so youthful profile is essential to the army now youthful profile does not only imply that you only have youthful people you have to also have experienced people it's a mix of experience and youthful profile and has brought out there have been many officers young officers and many jawans who in the first year of service have been you know raw courage they have just gone blindly and just uh, assaulted onto the enemy so that kind of raw courage is also required and experience is also required because today's war is innovative you have to have lot of technical ideas etc so to that effect uh, agni veer firstly the big change is that earlier all the test used to start firstly with the uh, physical test this time now for agni veer it is first and foremost it is written test and therefore after that is the uh, you know the physical test so what it implies is that this is a decade of transformation we have to fight in a multi domain environment we have to be technical savvy and therefore people have to have a technical fair or a, a educated bent of mind and therefore the feedback coming from the environment is that yes the agni veer firstly let me be very clear they are the same recruits who were there earlier and uh, the system has changed only of the recruitment pattern but the jawans are same so the raw courage is also there the technical knowledge is there and therefore you know today in the uh, age of artificial intelligence and everything their uptake in all this technical equipment will be very good simultaneously they'll have to be taken uh, uh, on the physical aspect also very very strongly so uh, to combine it the mix of experience and the mix of raw courage the youthful profile is essential you look at manipur today indian army and uh, you know the, the security forces are battling so many issues there and now with the drones coming in after all if you have to jam these drones you have to have some technical bent of mind so what i am trying to say is that it is essential now coming on to various other factors with the defense minister has highlighted i think i foresee that maybe 50% may be uh, retained or maybe in the longer run 75% may be retained it will be depending on the feedback which the indian army gives hmm. because the first uh, batches are now basically uh, they are already in the units so based on the feedback i am quite sure a review will be done and majority of them may be perhaps retained or hmm. see in one way it is another good i'll tell you my own experience when i was commanding my battalion a uh, infantry battalion is a cutting edge of a uh, the fighting force now as a co obviously the desire is to have a youthful profile and i remember when i was commanding my battalion many of the havaldar instructor they said we want to leave the army and i as a commanding officer had to take a very firm stand to relieve about 50 60 of them the what was the end state it was a very youthful profile uh, people became havaldar in 8 years of service mm -hmm. and therefore mm -hmm. the efficiency increased so what i'm trying to say this is an experiment it will pay off in the long run okay. yes 
there will be issues uh, feedback will keep coming and uh, indian army i am quite sure is amenable uh, to the review and government of india will also consider the review because it's okay. not that lakir ki wo line khinch di hai ki iske baad ab kuch nahi hoga mere khayal i think the flexibility will be there feedback will be taken it is the in the interest of the country yeah, the absolutely. national security that stakes of so feedback will be taken okay. and i think if the defense minister has highlighted i think uh, the, those uh, things after maybe one or two years feedback things will be changed okay. so i feel it's a step in the correct direction but with lot of uh, changes or additions may be required maria okay. colonel choudhry you wanted to come in see i just wanted to say one more thing that is that the uh, that the lot of tweaking in is required because it is not a thought of well thought of uh, scheme it was not pilot uh, you know uh, it was not tested so uh, the army or air force or navy cannot uh, defense forces cannot be a test bed for experimentation when a, when a uh, good uh, they are doing a good job they are uh, one of the best armies in the world there is no requirement of put spokes into that only in the uh, only to uh, bring the agility or to uh, in the in the case of uh, reducing the age of the age profile of the soldiers but at the same time we need technical savvy people we need technically trained people uh, the, now today our our uh, equipment is our uh, de- defense forces are technology savvy the hmm. equipment is uh, very very uh, sophisticated we need trained people i am from the missile background uh, prithvi missiles and agni missiles right so if there is a requirement to have uh, experienced people there is a requirement to train the people for the for the interests of the country for four years you are keeping somebody and not giving them any kind of training other than six months of basic training and you are not supposed to hmm. expose them to any of the cadres of the courses whereas when you compare them with respect to with respect to the short service commission officer short okay. service commission officer gets the same Right. Okay. Same so, so I have just enough time for. Just the same for, training and I have and just enough time for. And, and last thing, last thing, last thing. The, they get the same training. They go to the ca- courses, cadres. They stay up to fourteen years. Whereas Agnivis will get just twenty-one thousand rupees as compared to the regular soldier who's getting forty-five thousand rupees. That is the starting salary. There are okay. lot of disparities. So my take is very simple. Our take is very okay. simple. it is neither in the interest of the organizations nor nor in the interest of the youth the youth have it is not attractive and they have started a okay. lot of people i've just enough time for lieutenant general sanjay kulkarni 30 seconds to you stayed and on. then 30 seconds to major general yash mor please go ahead lieutenant general sanjay kulkarni maria at the very outset the army had only 7 years of color service till 1976 they fought wars 47 48 62 65 71 did he compromise with national security number 1 number 2 as regards the training is concerned it's absolutely it's 10 weeks of basic military training with 40 weeks of advanced military training with 7 weeks of the on the job training there is no compromise on training as number 3 if we take even the feedback today from the battalion that excellent feedback coming from their beat in firing beat in tactics beat in physical fitness mental robustness so there is nothing wrong with this is this is a fantastic scheme to have young people with physical fitness mental robustness national sec- security is not at all compromised is just politicizing an issue which has no meaning do you mean to say the government of the day then had compromised national security when the color service was only 7 years then we they when did we get on to the color service of 15 years only after 1976 not before that okay. and the, what was the pension only 35% of the people got pension till 1976 and what pension 55 today the pensions have gone up 350 times the pension is about of 700 times we had only 6 lakh pensioners in 71 today we have said 27 lakh pensioners the pension then was 95 rupees today it is over okay. 23000 major general yes sir i have just 30 seconds for Absolutely. you before i move on please go ahead just want to say what uh, you know i i have a tremendous respect for um, all the officers on the panel but one thing that has changed is that today joining as agni veer is the last resort of young people first choice is the state police then comes paramilitary forces which give you guarantee of the job for entire service up to 58 years of age hmm. here in one in one stroke we have dismantled 
the standard recruiting process which has stood the test of time. And please understand the socio-economic factor of our villages. If you don't understand that, then I think we are missing the bigger picture in this entire thing. The village boys, the rural youth, is the same people who are coming. Neither that we have improved the technological threshold okay. or the age. So these two issues of their become agile, they are young, and their technology is savvy just doesn't stand ground. So right. socioeconomic factor must be taken into uh, in this thing. And last word, we must get the best young people into the armed force, the best young people. If the best are not coming to you, if the Agnivir scheme is uh, is not able to attract the best, then I think we need to take a total relook at this. Thank All you. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Major General Yash Moore. Uh, Lieutenant General Sanjay Kulkarni, Major General Sanjay Miston, Lieutenant General D.P. Watts and Colonel Rohit Chaudhary.